I'm going to talk about the Brett Kavanaugh, Christine Ford situation, but before you shut this off, don't worry, it is not going to be from a political perspective, it is going to be from a human and legal one. For those of you who have never seen me before, my name is David. I'm a Montreal litigator turned YouTuber. I've been doing commercial litigation for over a decade. For anyone who's been watching my videos, you'd know that I sort of wound down the commercial litigation side of my practice because I just didn't want to be doing it in another 10 years. But I have that decade plus experience under my belt and from time to time I talk about current issues from that legal perspective. This Brett Kavanaugh, Christine Ford situation, I mean, other than being politically depressing, has revealed something which I find is very depressing on a social front. Anybody who spends any time on social Social media would see the posts from the left and the right and just be shocked at how dichotomized, divisive, intolerant of the other perspective each are. And it's it's mind-blowing. It's mind-blowing. It's soul-crushing. I've been getting into some discussion with some people. I've been telling them, like, you don't need to be a survivor of sexual assault to understand why so many victims take so long to come forward, if they ever do come forward at all. The shame, the guilt, the fear of repercussions to the extent that the victimizer usually is in some form of position of authority over the victim. The flip side, you don't need to be be a lawyer to understand the potential inequities and injustices that can result from allegations coming out 35, 40 years later. These are two totally understandable positions that either side doesn't seem to want to genuinely and legitimately understand. And when you bring in social media into the mix, all that you end up having are people shouting their opinions at the top of their lungs on social media without any form of intention or, or genuine desire to have meaningful dialogue. They just want to shout it out so that people can see what they think and that those that agree with them can huddle around and say, yay, we agree with you, you're so right. Anybody who disagrees with them, you get into a fight or you say, I didn't come here to fight on my wall, go away. The social media has become a forum, not for discussion, but for bullhorn screaming. On both sides, this is, this is, this is non-partisan observation of social media. I always say that politics ruins everything and politics has certainly ruined social media. It has become the source of divisive political posts which ultimately serve no purpose other than rallying the troops on the one side and alienating those who disagree on the other and bringing it back to law because there is a legal lesson to be learned from this. When I used to draft my proceedings, I would draft my proceedings and gather my facts from my side but what I would do at some point is draft the proceedings for the other party. Now in law when you do this you sort of do it from a Machiavellian perspective in that you want to anticipate and undercut opposing parties' arguments. Because to accurately, fairly, and reasonably describe the other party's position to a judge in the case of law, so that you can then respond to the arguments that you know they're going to make, sort of takes away the force of that punch before it even comes. That's the Machiavellian sort of cynical use in the practice of law. Cynical, but useful and, and tactical. On the social basis, there is tremendous value, spiritual, from carrying out the same exercise. It's nice to believe what you believe. You know what you believe. Try for a second to argue, to present the belief of the other side. Try to accurately, fairly, and succinctly set out the position of the other side. Taking the Christine Ford situation. If you support Brett Kavanaugh, fine, you're entitled to your beliefs. And incidentally, beliefs by their nature can neither be proven nor disproven. That's why they're called beliefs. It's your own personal conclusions based on your own personal observations from a series of facts or observations. Necessarily subjective, necessarily irrefutable to some extent. You can have untenable beliefs like the moon is made out of cheese, or you can have the belief in God, which can neither be proven nor disproven, and it serves nothing to try to prove to someone who believes in God that their belief in God is ill-founded. And it is also a useless exercise to try to convince someone who doesn't believe in God that God exists. It's a belief. It is your deepest conclusion from your observations of the world. So take someone who believes Brett Kavanaugh and say, describe what someone who believes Christine Ford is going to say. Explain to me what they're going to say. Force yourself to not only verbalize it, but to feel it and to understand it. She claims to be the victim of sexual assault when she was 15. Why did she wait 36 years to come up with the allegations? Fear, shame, embarrassment, not wanting to be ostracized, not wanting to be known for that at that age. Now, nobody's asking you to agree with it. Nobody's asking you not to form your own conclusions from it, but try to understand it. And by doing it, you're going to know and internalize what the other side says. And in that sense, you'll be able to have a discourse with them. Those who believe Christine Ford, try to verbalize what those who support Brett Kavanaugh are saying. Allegations coming out 36 years after the fact, there can be some obvious inequities, injustices as a result from that. Witnesses who might have been able to exonerate Brett Kavanaugh may have totally forgotten. How do you respond to an allegation 36 years later? How do you disprove 
prove it 36 years later. You can believe Christine Ford and you can have your own perspective of the entire situation and still be able to verbalize and understand and respect the other side for believing what they believe. The problem is that the issue has been politicized where it has become a litmus test of one's political beliefs, one's political view of the world. You're either with us or you're against us. I mean, and that's the beauty of politics is that it pits one side against the other by creating these false dichotomies as though you have to be on one side or the other. This idea of dichotomizing beliefs where it's either good versus bad, right versus wrong, if you're not with us, you're against us, it's fundamentally political and it's fundamentally the modus operandi of the media enterprise, which is a commercial for-profit enterprise, how do you make money? How do you get people engaged in media? On YouTube, a video is going to get promoted based on the engagement it gets. Doesn't matter if the engagement is good or bad, just as long as it gets engagement, because engagement equals traffic, traffic equals ad revenue, or ad revenue equals profits. So YouTube is about promoting the videos that get reactions, good or bad. A thousand thumbs up or a thousand thumbs down, it doesn't matter, just as long as that video is getting a reaction. That's how media also does it. By not just creating, by creating, promoting, and drilling in this fabricated dichotomy that people should somehow be unable to comprehend and empathize with those who think differently than them. But the vast majority of people are not good or bad, are not right or wrong, are not tolerant or intolerant. The vast majority of people have genuine, legitimate beliefs and they may diverge from one person to the next, but there is no person that holds an absolute moral truth and it's this idea that, that anyone does, which is promoted and reinforced in social media that leads to these unbridgeable divides where people say, I can't even understand what the other person is saying. Anybody who says that is either not trying or doesn't want to try. And then bringing it back to the practice of law, any lawyer who builds straw man arguments of opposing counsel's arguments, any lawyer who mischaracterizes or oversimplifies the other party's position, doesn't gain points in the eyes of the judge. They actually lose them because it's intellectually dishonest to do it. It doesn't do them or their client a service. And they start by shooting themselves in the foot before they even get the foot in the door. They're gonna build a straw man argument, mischaracterize opposing counsel's position, then opposing counsel's gonna get in there and rectify the situation and make the lawyer who mischaracterized their position look dishonest and unwilling to actually present the truth to the judge so the judge can assess on his or her own. The best thing you can do is actually accurately, fairly, and succinctly present it to a judge. You do this in law strictly so that you can respond to the good arguments in advance. But in life, you do this not so that you can win the argument, but rather so you can get along with your neighbors and your friends. And not so that you can sit there posting divisive, dichotomizing posts on social media just so that the people who agree with you can say what a good, great person you are and how wrong everyone else is for disagreeing with you. That is, it's no longer social media. That is, by definition, anti-social media. And it is the problem with social media. You imagine Twitter as a platform is famous for Twitter wars. You have a social media platform that is famous, that has a basically a coin term for starting wars among friends or among strangers. Well done, I mean, congratulations. That's, that, is the, that is the pinnacle of technological evolution right there. A platform where people can fight with each other more easily. And then you have Facebook, where people are not posting to actually have a dialogue, they're posting simply to get the pat on the back from the people they agree with and further alienate the people they don't agree with. And that's not how progress is made. It's not how you become a better lawyer, and it's not how you become a better person. Okay. Like, share, subscribe. I've been doing a lot of these law vlogs. I'm still gonna stick with the cooking vlogs and the fishing vlogs, but uh, you know, I figure I may as well make use of my 11 years of practice, four years of schooling, four years of philosophy. Yeah, 20 years of experience. I can make use of it for YouTube videos. Like, share, subscribe, hit the notification button, and try. You don't have to agree with someone you disagree with, but try to understand what they're saying and why they're saying it. Peace out.